Hello everyone. Today's session is about file server to file server synchronization over cloud storage. We have an Ubuntu server set up and it's running OpenStack. So OpenStack Swift will be the storage we'll be using for server to server synchronization. We also have a file server. Um, it just showed and the active, uh, active directory server here. Uh, the Active Directory server is not a primary focus in this session, but it's there um, because both file servers need to um, they belong to the to the Active Directory. They don't have to, but in this this demonstration, they belong to the same Active Directory. And we also have a, a local copy of the Gladinet Cloud Enterprise running, so it's running on the .2.112. IP address. So what we are going to do next is we are going to migrate the test share to it's a network share from file server number one. So we need to migrate it over to the cloud storage before we can do server to server synchronization. So under the hood it's going to set up a two-way synchronization to the cloud storage and put the folder under version control. So if you look into the raw file folder structure in the OpenStack Swift container. You're going to see um, change log and metadata information and things like that. So now this folder is uh, has been migrated to cloud storage and then we can see it from the web portal. So now we are going to file server number two. So we are logging in to file server number two. So what we are going to do now is we're going to install the file server agent. So file server agent is the piece of software that um, just fit for the server OS like 2012, 2008, even 2003. So after the installation, it needs uh, to have a restart. And the file server agent needs to be run on both file server number one and file server number two. It's just that we already installed the file server agent on the very first file server. Um, as you can see there, when we go to the web portal and do a migration wizard, we do see the first file server. So now we are at the second file server. So for the second file server, it's a new installation of the file server agent, so it needs to have a reboot, and then we are not at the end of the reboot, so the um, the connection dialog should show up you know, momentarily, and then it, it does. So now we will need to log in to the same um, administrator's account so we can synchronize the, the folder. So we need to connect to the Gladinet Cloud Enterprise Server. So the Gladinet Cloud Enterprise Server is running locally here. It doesn't have to because everything is over HTTP and HTTPS. So the two file servers could be at two different locations. The Gladinet Cloud Enterprise Server can be on the third location and the OpenStack Swift storage could be on the fourth um, location. It doesn't matter. So it's everything is over HTTPS. Now you can see we are on the second file server. And so what we are going to do is we want to synchronize the folder in from the first server, uh, call it you know, test share to new server sync. So we can know this is the, um, we don't have to call it like that, but you know, just for demonstration, we use a name to, um, to make it you know, easy to understand which folder is which. So now after we do the link to, uh, link to local, we just need to restart the, uh, the service. So it's pretty straightforward. It's uh, the server agent is running as a service. So we would just go to the uh, control panel and then we can go to the administrative tools and it should be the, um, the Gladinet Cloud Access service. So if you scroll down to Gladinet Cloud Access Service, you could just do a restart. And after the restart, 
we will see um, the files and folders. So if you are trying to follow the uh, this video to set up a two file server synchronization, um, you're going to see you know the same thing. The folders are coming in, and if the folders are coming in slowly and there's a throttle control, you can go to the management console and go to the settings and disable the throttle control. The idea of the throttle control is, you know, just over the, when you're using it over the day, you don't want it to, um, to synchronize too much, right? So you probably want to speed up the synchronization at night and then <clears throat> slow down the synchronization during the day. Um, however, you could change the throttle. Um, so, so it doesn't, you know, do that kind of default behavior. As you can see here, as we are just watching this folder, the files are coming in, right? We, we, we didn't do anything, but the files are coming in and the files are, you know, the same as we have seen from the file server number one. So we're going to create a new folder and then we just name it like folder created from second server. So just to make sure that, you know, just by looking at the folder name, we know where the folder is coming from. But in reality, you probably don't want to do things like that. You just do it as, you know, name the folders as the um, the business requires it to be. So whatever the folder name you, you give it to it, you know, that's fine. So now we are uploading four documents from the second file server. And you can see the file name here. And now we can go to uh, the web portal. So we go to the web portal and then we do a refresh and you can see here the folder created from second server shows up as well. So it doesn't matter whether the folder is created from the first server, the existing folders or the folder, a new folder come, you know, created from the second file server. They all synchronized to OpenStack, right? So it doesn't have to be OpenStack Swift, it's just any kind of cloud storage. But we just use OpenStack as an um, example because that's the only thing we can install locally, right? We cannot install Amazon S3 locally to test it out. Um, so everything could be uh, set up in a test lab test environment. As you can see here, um, we are on the first server now and there you go. The test share 2 has a new folder and this folder is coming from um, the second file server. So as a summary, I'm going to sh draw some uh, simple block diagrams uh, using a very uh, simple tool, the Microsoft Paint, to show you what we have done. So in the middle here, which is the Gladinet Cloud Enterprise, and then we have it running locally here. Um, you can run it in you know, data center, it doesn't matter because the Audi API access point is over HTTP, HTTPS. And there's also cloud storage any kind of cloud storage, like Amazon S3, uh, OpenStack. Right? In this case, we're using OpenStack. Um, it runs inside the, uh, the virtual machine under that uh, Ubuntu 64-bit server. And we also have two file servers. So these two file servers doesn't have to be in the same uh, geolocation. It, they could just on two different places you know, in the world. Um, as long as they have internet access, they can synchronize files and folders over to each other. So we have file server A and we have file server B. So what, what, we, what we did is we do an attach folder, right? So we attach the folder to Gladinet Cloud Enterprise. And once we do that, the folder's contents are synchronized to um, the OpenStack Swift via the Gladinet Cloud Enterprise. Uh, the middle tier, right? And then also the file server B, remember we created a folder from the second server and then the folder is also synchronized over to, um, to the OpenStack Swift. So you see the data is flowing from the first file server uh, going through Gladinet Cloud Enterprise and reach the cloud storage and then the file gets synchronized down to file server B. And then file server B uh, the folder and files created are also synchronized up and then synchronized down to file server A. So that's how it works, right? simple data flow chart. So file, to, uh, file server to file server synchronization over cloud storage. Thank you very much.